Hey guys, this is Michelle from Virtual Hand Care, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you six items that can help you prepare for your carpal tunnel surgery. There are a lot of ways that you can prepare for carpal tunnel surgery or any kind of hand surgery. And there are several items out there that you may want to get before you have the carpal tunnel surgery that can make life after just a little less stressful, hopefully make you feel a little bit more comfortable and make your recovery just smoother. The six items I'm going to go over are going to kind of start from right after you have surgery. So you're still going to have that post-op dressing. And then also I'm going to give you an item idea that you may want to look into getting when you start kind of getting more into strength training, or maybe want to bear some weight into your hand, but you're still a little sore with that. Now, remember your doctor is going to be providing you with some detailed post-operative instructions of what you should be using and getting as well. So do make sure you follow the guidelines provided by your doctor. Okay, so item number one is waterproofing your post-op dressing. So many of you are gonna have a bulky dressing on right after you have surgery. The size of it varies greatly among surgeons. Yours could be really, really bulky and wrapped and you can't move. Other doctors might just put something very minimal on you, but none of them want you to get your post-op dressing wet. They want you to keep it clean and dry. And so there's a couple of things you can do to help keep your incision clean and dry. The first easy hack is to just use a bread bag. So save yourself a bread bag, clean out a bread bag. It's the perfect size to slip your hand in and you just wanna make sure that you tape it at the bottom and then even then once you tape it i still would not let the arm hang down i would just leave it elevated as you are showering so that water still does not make its way down into the bread bag however if the water's splashing it's still going to keep your dressing clean and dry another hack that you can try that maybe you even have this in your pantry or in your drawer at home is press and seal. This is another great way to keep your bulky dressing dry. So what you can do with the press and seal is you just wrap it around your dressing and you just press it down to seal it. And then when you shower, again, it can keep it clean and dry. And with the press and seal, because it's not 100% secure to the skin, I would, again, just keep your arm elevated so that the water does not travel down and possibly get into your bulky dressing. If you're looking for a way to definitely make sure you don't get any water in, then I would recommend using a waterproof cast cover. There are many of them out there. This one is a Aqua Shield reusable orthopedic cast cover. Like I said, there's a bunch of them out there. I'll link where you can find some in the description box below. If you're really wanting 100% waterproof way and you don't want to have to worry about the position of your arm and you want to have your arm down or up or wherever and you just want that security of keeping your incision dry then i would recommend getting a cast cover okay item number two this one is more for when your bulky dressing comes off but you still need to kind of keep your incision clean and dry then you would want something smaller to cover your incision and for that i really like using Tegaderm film. This is a great way to keep your incision waterproof and not impede your function or your mobility. You can still place this on your incision and still move because more than likely you're gonna be starting a little bit of active motion as well after that dressing comes off. I will link this below of where you can find this. This particular size is a two and three eighths by two and three quarter inch. You can find them in a bunch of different sizes. So depending on the size of your incision, then you would want to size accordingly. However, I really like these because as long as you seal it all the way around your incision, it's a wonderful way to keep your incision covered and clean and dry. Another way to cover your incision, if you don't necessarily need to keep it completely dry, say your incision is completely healed and you're allowed to get it wet now, but you still want to keep it maybe covered when you're going out to the grocery store or something. I really like these fabric flexible style band-aids. Again, when you have a carpal tunnel incision, it's right at that wrist. And often you may find putting anything right there, things just it pops off, right? You're trying to move the wrist and get your mobility going, but anything you put on your wrist pops off. 
Well, that's why I like more of the flexible fabric type of band-aids for that. So this particular size of this is one and three quarter inch by four inch. I'll go ahead and link these below of where you can find these. And then one little hack I like to give you with that to keep it on your wrist a little bit longer is just simply cut the fabric band-aids and place it on your wrist and that will help that stay on that wrist a little bit longer and kind of conform to that incision a little bit better. Okay, number three is more for swelling. So these items that I'm going to show you are more to help with the swelling. So after you take your dressing off and you start moving, you may notice that you start getting a little bit of swelling maybe into the fingers, maybe into the wrist, or maybe you notice that you're waking up with some stiffness in the morning or some swelling and you wanna wear something at nighttime. You have a couple of different options when it comes to helping your swelling or what we like to call edema management. And for that, I really like edema gloves and I also like compression stockinettes. You might just want to save this video and bookmark these links because you may not really know how much you're going to swell if you haven't had surgery yet. However, if you're here and you did recently have surgery, then you would be able to size yourself and get the appropriate size for you. I really like this particular edema glove because it has your fingertips free. So it still allows for you to feel objects, to feel your phone, to feel what you're doing. However, still continue to work on that compression. So that's what the edema glove does is it helps provide a uniform compression over the palm, over the back of the hand, the thumb and the fingers, but still allow you to use your hand. And it even goes down a little bit long enough past your incision down into the wrist. So a compression garment like an edema glove can be very helpful if you're having some persistent swelling. Now, another option is to get a stockinette. Usually these come in rolls or a certain length and then you can cut them and use them as you need them. Now with these stockinettes, as you can see, they are also come in a couple of different sizes. So again, it really depends on how much swelling you have as well as the size of your hand. And so with the stockinette, what you would do is you would want to cut to size and then you could simply cut out a little hole for your thumb. And then the compression of the stockinette can really help with that swelling that you might still have in your hand. The idea of wearing compression garments is to really help get ahead of that swelling as soon as you can, because the longer you keep swelling in the hand, then the more it can start affecting your mobility. Okay, helpful item number four after your carpal tunnel surgery is something to help with your scar. For scar management, I really like silicone gel pads. They can conform nicely over your scar and they're really helpful to prevent raised scars. There's a lot of research that shows that silicone gel sheeting or applying tape such as paper tape to a scar can be very helpful in the beginning stages of, of scar healing and scar management or any kind of issues with your scar. And I do have another scar video where I go a little more detail into the gel sheeting and using the tape and I'll link that here. And that video is more of my own experience of dealing with my own shoulder scar. I had a lipoma excision removed and I had a big scar over my clavicle and I used silicone and taping of my own as well to manage my own scar. Okay, now item number five that can help you after you have your carpal tunnel surgery. This one you might not need for several weeks and it does depend on your doctor and your doctor's protocol when they want you to start some strengthening. Typically it's around four to five weeks. However, that varies greatly. So do make sure that you ask your doctor when you can start strengthening your hand. But just know that usually it's not for a couple of weeks. However, when you do start strengthening, I do recommend putty. Putty is a kind of a staple in any hand therapy clinics. And so I usually recommend putty because it is a really great way to work on getting that strength going in the hand, especially after having a carpal tunnel surgery, because your hand is going to feel weak and it's gonna take a little while for you to get that grip and that pinch strength back. And so I really like the putty because you can work on gripping with the putty, but you also can work on pinching and those fine motor 
type of movements that you might have noticed you didn't quite have before you had the surgery. Maybe that was a big reason why you had the surgery is because you were dropping a lot of things. So working on that grip and that pinch with the putty can really help you get back the function that you're looking for. And this particular putty is light yellow, which is a, a very softer type of putty. It's the perfect putty to start with. Putty comes in many different colors, which means different resistances as well. I will put a link in the comments below where you can find putty. Okay, so finally, item number six that you may want to get down the road once you've done all of this stuff. You're already healed, you're starting to use your hand more, your function is there, you're working on the strength, but you notice you can't quite put any kind of weight into your hand or into your wrist or any kind of pressure on that scar is still tender. That is something that I commonly hear. And for that, I really like using WAGs. WAGs stand for wrist assured gloves. They're actually made by an occupational therapist. And these gloves are perfect for somebody that has some of that palmer soreness or tenderness, but they wanna get back to maybe doing push-ups or typing at the computer is, is sore or you know putting any kind of pressure into the palm is just very tender. These gloves have a thick padding right at that palm where you have that tenderness. So it really can help cushion and pad that already tender sore area. And I'll put a link below of where you can find these gloves. And one last tip that's not on my list, but that is to make sure that you see a hand therapist and you can see a hand therapist either in person or through video. They can be very helpful with providing you with the right exercises and tips and, and techniques to help you get the best recovery after your carpal tunnel surgery. So I hope by now that you've got a list of a couple things that you might want to get that will help your carpal tunnel surgery recovery. Hopefully it will prepare you a little bit better and help make your recovery a little more smooth. Now, again, I will put links of a lot of these items in the description box below. If you are looking for actual exercises of what to do after your carpal tunnel surgery, I do have a video that I will link here. So do check that out. If you found this video helpful, do please give it a like and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and check out these videos here that YouTube is suggesting for you. Best of luck to you on your carpal tunnel surgery. Thanks for watching.